Today, we are talking about the company and app Stash. Now, Stash started the way that many different companies start in two people seeing a problem in their own backyard. Actually, it was two Wall Street guys who noticed that everyday people in their area in Midtown weren't investing. They, they started asking people outside the building they worked in, do you invest in stocks? And they kept hearing the same answers over and over again, which was, uh, no, I don't, but I really want to. I just find it confusing. Or, uh, no, I want to, but I can't now until I'm rich. And what the founders of the company Stash really saw was two key problems. One, investing was just not relatable enough. People weren't doing it because it was confusing and overwhelming. Two, people thought that they needed to have a lot of money to start investing when that's simply untrue. So together they started the company Stash, which is a simple app that helps you build a portfolio of stocks with as little as $5. Uh, as a consumer, you can choose different investments that reflect your own beliefs or goals. And uh, what was really interesting about the company that, that I saw was uh, it was very much built for education. And the differentiator that really helped this business get off the ground was uh, all along the way, they've always been very focused on how do we educate consumers to understand uh, and, and start making these type of investments. So Stash isn't just for your average millennial. Their average user was actually 29 years old, which I found interesting. And it's really for people who feel like they couldn't participate in the market, but now they can because of Stash. So why don't you give us the breakdown of how this application works? Yeah, so I downloaded the app um, earlier this week, um, signed up for an account. The onboarding experience was, um, I'd say, slightly less smooth as some of the others in this space that we've covered. Um, but overall, it took me about two minutes to get signed up with an account. Um, and the big two features are basically they they're a uh, a more user friendly brokerage. They make it more approachable and feel more comfortable for a newbie investor to um, buy a stock. And the way that they do that, I think, is very clever. And I'll um, kind of kick it over to you to kind of elaborate on this. But really, they they use the logos and something that you're already very comfortable with. Um, from a consumer standpoint, as opposed to the stock ticker, which is feels like something that is unapproachable or maybe outside of someone's investment knowledge. So I think they've done a really cool thing by giving you from visually, from a visual standpoint, something that you're already comfortable with. It makes you that much more comfortable with maybe potentially buying your first stock. So I think it's really cool from a intro to investing standpoint. What do you, what thoughts do you have on that? Yeah, I think you just nailed it uh, right in the head, which is uh, there, the two problems I saw, the first being that people uh, don't know how to invest because it's not relatable um, and people thinking they need a lot of money. I think this is the way that they solved that problem. Really two things. The first was um, they, they made it so that the stocks that you see up front and at, right when you sign in to purchase are the brands and companies that you're already buying from. So you're already buying from Apple. You're already buying from Coca-Cola. Well, if you believe in that business, why not invest in them? And that's the bridge that they're trying to, uh, they're trying to bridge those two uh, pieces together. These companies that you're already buying from and these consumers um, who maybe think that they understand those companies because they're the target audience. So um, yeah, I thought that was a very clever way to help solve this problem of how do we make investing relatable when there's charts, charts, ticker symbols, all these different stuff. So um, that was really smart. And then the personal advisor aspect and the coaching that the, the platform provides with tips um, and education, I think is the, the kind of second punch that helps um, solving this problem. So, you know, you sign in, you see brands you've heard of before, you buy their stock because you believe in them, and then you get tips and advice from a quote unquote personal advisor who makes you feel more comfortable, like you're doing the right thing, uh, like you're informed. Um, and again, from a very simple perspective, not from a highly technical perspective. Um, I believe I saw that uh, the average user of Stash, uh, their average salary was, uh, I think it was $50,000 a year. Um, that might've been from a few years back, but uh, very interesting to see that. And I think very smart the way they leverage themselves into the market by tackling those two needs 
and uh, and helping people in that way. Um, do you want to bring up the uh, the concept around the stock back and and how um, the debit card actually helps you invest in some of these companies as well? Yeah, so I think the other kind of innovative thing with Stash is they have a debit card that's attached to your investment account and it allows you to spend that money um, throughout your day just as a, as a normal normal bank account. And I think it's the closest pairing that at least I've seen between investing and spending. It feels like there's usually a kind of middleman or an intermediary where you have to transfer funds from one account to another to really get them onto an investment platform. Um, this kind of couples them. So it, it's an interesting take, one that I've not seen um, really with any of these other apps at this point. So it'll be interesting to see how that um, benefits the um, user. And I think this goes back to a couple of predictions that we've both made from time to time is that uh, pa unique pairings and decoupling of services that are traditionally coupled or not coupled is is only going to increase. And for some people that may this feature to be able to have a debit card connected to an investment account may be a game changer for them. Um, so it's good to see the variety. Um, as far as the mechanics of it, there's there's a couple other incentives to use that debit card and it's called stock back. And for all purchases, you're going to get 0.125% to invest um, into the company of your choice. So it's not a huge uh, kind of cash back or money back incentive, but they do have certain partners where they will offer up to 5% back. So uh, that starts to get a little bit more exciting and um, rewarding with uh, partners uh, on their platform. So those are the, like, the big incentives that go along with that uh, debit card. Yeah, and the incentive part is very key. And the reason we bring it up is because customer acquisition in this new industry is uh, really the differentiating factor that's allowing these companies to grow and thrive. And so what Stash did smartly was they saw a demographic that wasn't being served and they created smart incentives and uh, user experience that helped onboard them. So it's really growing the market, I think, for investing in finance. Um, if you're getting people who didn't previously invest to invest, uh, and like you said, they, they do that through that smart sort of brand pairing, um, smart incentives. So I think the big picture is really, you know, there's many different competitors in this market. You've got the legacy players, um, you've got the banks, you've got uh, new companies like Robinhood or Acorns. And the reason I think Stash has continued to grow, it's, it's a pretty significant company at this point, is because they captured a different audience who cares about different things. They needed that educational help. Um, they are investing less money uh, maybe than a typical investor. And I think that's going to really help them over the long run. So um, I, I know they have ambitions to uh, open up you know, more different types of accounts, um, but they're probably positioned pretty well to do that if they've built that trust um, with their user base. So um, yeah, I guess to me, I'd put this in the category of uh, a Robin Hood. I think that's kind of, you know, it's just a, a pretty standard investing app. It's just simplified um, and with a differentiator of, of education um, and really, uh, I guess, helping try to guide that process and, and simplify it. Yep. I call it an intro brokerage. Intro um, brokerage. I love that. I, that's where I'd put them. Yep. And, and are you going to use, uh, I guess, to, to end the podcast, are you going to use uh, Stash as part of building your portfolio or, or no? So right now I have, I use a few uh, brokerage accounts. I uh, use a couple robo advisors. Um, I'm using Betterment, Wealthfront and E-Trade core portfolios. I don't see an incentive that um, Stash is, is offering that kind of makes me want to deviate from that plan. So for now, it's a no for me. Um, how about you? Yeah, no for me as well. I don't think either of us are the target demographic. Doesn't mean it's not a good product um, for them, uh, but I think the features we're looking for are uh, probably different. So um, we'll give an update if, if anything on that changes, but if not, we'll see you back again with the next episode.